I just wanted to drop in and say a quick hello and thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel and tuned in for the first episode of my brand new series, Classical Conscience. I am so appreciative of all of your encouragement and support and your enthusiasm just makes sharing music with you so special and enjoyable. While I work on getting episode two out for next week, I wanted to share a little sneak preview of my conversation with Danny Elfman. Check it out. The second movement contains a lot of chaos, excitement, and craziness. What was it like for you writing that? The whole thing about the second movement was how monstrously difficult the uh, cadenza is. <laughs> and. Uh, it's actually the first thing I thought of when uh, Tim Fox, my agent for this type of music, um, approached me in Prague in the bar after an Elfman Burton show uh, with the idea of a violin concerto. And I was going, violin concerto? Hmm, boy, I don't know. And I started thinking, violin and percussion cadenza. That was just like the first thing that popped into my head. So it's just funny that um, be way before anything else existed was the thought going into it that somewhere there was going to be a percussion and violin cadenza because it's something I just never heard before and I, I really wanted to. This started like most things with an improvisation. So I was just improvising and then in that improvisation, and um, I started coming up with variations on this kind of a frenetic uh, rhythm around that melody, and I started getting really uh, intrigued by it. So, in the out of the improvisation came uh, a couple of minutes of harmonically some of the things I wanted to do with it. And once I had that, I knew that okay, I, I've got the foundation or the launching of my second movement with this. One of my favorite spots in the second movement cadenza is a place where I remember back in the studio, you asked me to improvise some stuff and you said you wanted this section to be wild and crazy and very ringing. So I thought, okay, what can we do to accomplish that? So I said, okay, let's add some harmonics and maybe some open strings. But what I never imagined in that moment was what you ended up creating. You added some toms and they go back and forth with me in matching these pitches. And it's one of those sections that makes you feel like your, your heartbeat really gets going. Um, but in the music, it's also a big landing moment. So every time I play it on stage and I get to that point, I'm like, yes, this is where we're going. This is what we were aiming for. And um, and I just love feeling like, you know, the harmonics are shooting out of my violin and then the tom pitches are coming out from behind me and the orchestra and together it's like they, they break into the space that is the concert hall. And that's, I just always thought that that's really, really cool. And there's one other spot in the second movement that I would like to talk about because I think it's so special, um, mainly because of its difference from the rest of the movement. I just think it's amazing how, you know, in the middle of this very serious classical violin concerto, you have something that is just so fun and dancey. Is dancey a word? Anyway, fun and dancey and I mean, how, like, was it, did you ever have second thoughts about putting it in there? Yeah, I mean, because I thought I was writing in the second movement something more modern, and suddenly I fell into this kind of dancey, uh, Piazzolla-inspired thing, and I was going, what is this doing here? This doesn't <laughs> fit in this uh, movement, but in the end, um, I think it was you and John Malchari kind of talked me into keeping it in. Well, I, I appreciate that you you not only came up with it, but um, decided to keep it in there, even though under pressure from me and Maestro Malchari. <laughs> I think it, yes. you know, it definitely adds to the concerto. And, and it also gives us, you know, a little bit of a break from whatever you were doing before, which is which was very, very intense and, you know, 
and sometimes like schizophrenic, sometimes chaotic, sometimes savage. Um, and then immediately following this little dance section, you have something that's so wonderfully lyrical for just a moment. And I think that just the, that little spot on its own kind of brings everything together because of the contrast it creates. So that, that was a good move. <laughs> cool. If you want to see more of Danny, come back on July 22nd for episode two of Classical Conscience. In the meantime, if you would like to see part of a live performance of Danny's Violin Concerto 1111, click on the link in the description below. Can't wait to see you again soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.